All right. Hi there, everyone. Uh, welcome to Trying Time Astrology. We're here with uh, Lars in all black over there. He's uh, an astrology scholar. He studies um, Hellenistic astrology, Western astrology, Vedic astrology, any kind of astrology. You name it, Lars is your guy. Uh, then we have James, which is a professional astrologer uh, with a very busy schedule and a professional practice. And... Uh, I am Alex. I am a practitioner of hybrid astrology. I try to make astrology simple and practical. And today we're here to join our powers to talk about Jupiter transiting Scorpio between uh, October 2017 and November 2018. I hope I'm not getting the, the end date wrong here. It's November 2018, right? Something like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, 13, so, it's 13 months. So yeah, that should be months. correct. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to try to give the viewers of this video a few like basic guidelines on how to figure out what Jupiter is likely to do uh, when transiting uh, this por portion of your chart, uh, which is Scorpio. And of course, this will be uh, very general. You should look at your entire chart and ideally you should have someone look at your entire chart. But if you're into astrology, hopefully the tips that we are going to share with you today uh, are going to be useful for you. So, uh, first of all, I, I would like to ask you, Lars, like you spoke about the the terms or the so-called bounds uh, of Scorpio and why it, it's important to look at that when a, a planet is transiting a certain term. And of course, we've seen that the end of Libra, it belongs to Mars and the beginning of Scorpio. And there's so much uh, in the on the world stage that hints that Jupiter transiting the bound of Mars isn't really that good for general events. So can you touch on what the bounds are, like a bit of guidance sure, to people yeah. and why they should pay attention to planets transiting the bounds of other planets? Sure. So in this particular case or with any transit, you have uh, multiple ways of dividing up a sign and bounds is just the most, one of the most prominent forms in Hellenistic astrology is basically you, you give like a few uneven sets of degrees to the five uh, planets. And so what this, why this is important is because Jupiter is going to be transiting Scorpio and we don't want to assume that its whole transit of Scorpio is going to be exactly the same. So, you know, it's when it goes into its own bounds in Scorpio, for example, then it's going to feel more at home and it's going to be more, Jupiter is going to be more expansive, more faithful, um, more lighthearted. Whereas, you know, Scorpio's generally it's, it's a dark sign. It's associated with the eighth house. So it deals with, uh, death and rebirth, uh, stuck emotions. It's like a swamp. I think of it like a swamp, um, and with occult themes as well and power. And so, you know, for example, right now, Jupiter's in Mars, Mars's bounds, which are a little bit more of a, a cruel, set of bounds in Scorpio. It's, it's a double hit of Mars. Mars rules Scorpio, bounds of Scorpio, and so that kind of thing. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll include that information uh, in a, uh, you know, in a PDF or something. With right. video. But, so for all the viewers, there's going to be a free PDF in the description where we will give a more detailed information on, on uh, more things that you could uh, find useful. So, uh, James, what, what do you think about Jupiter transiting Scorpio? Any, any things that really have your attention with this transit, maybe uh, in regards to particular ascendants or placements, or just how other planets are also arranged around this? What do you expect more? And how could it be different from previous transits of Jupiter and Scorpio uh, because of other planets and the way oh. they're transiting now, like, for example, Saturn going into Capricorn or something like this? Well, I think that's like, um, that would be a lot to cover <laughs> in, in, in a short amount of time. Um, I think that uh, the first like thing I would mention is, um, is that if you have, you know, your sun, moon, rising sign, um, or any of the planets in, in a water sign, that's going to be um, really important for this transit. So um, if you, you know, and that would be Pisces, you know, Cancer, cancer. Scorpio, right? So right, right. Um, and I didn't do that in order. So, and so Scorpio, Pisces, there's the order for it. Um, but if you have like anything significant in any of those three signs, 
then uh, Jupiter's transit is going to be more meaningful to you. But um, I would also say that if someone has, um, you know, Pisces or Sagittarius emphasized in their chart, then uh, this is going to manifest in a more uh, pronounced way, uh, simply because things to do with Jupiter would always manifest in that way. Um, uh, as far as history, if we look back, um, I think it's important to realize that um, things are not always going to be that different because they're going to be themes. So Jupiter is building on a theme from 12 years ago. So if it's in your right. personal life, you can say, okay, what was going on in my life 12 years ago? Um, and, or, you know, about because of the whole 13 month idea of Jupiter's transit. So, but anyway, so this, the idea is that last time Jupiter was in Scorpio, what was happening in my life? And then how is this being built on now? So, right. Um, and it's also interesting to note that in uh, Vedic astrology, when using the Graha aspects, or uh, as I call them, I like to call them the projections of the planet, Jupiter is the planet that projects full, uh, full energy to the fifth and the ninth uh, mm -hmm. from it, as well as the seventh, as all planets do. But Jupiter is different in this regard that it touches, really touches the ninth and the fifth sign from wherever it is. So that's, as you said, that's uh, Pisces and Cancer. And of course, Jupiter rules Pisces and Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. So I would add to that, that besides uh, having important placements in Sagittarius and Pisces, which are obviously Jupiter ruled, Pisces is... Uh, perhaps the most benefited of these placements because, or the most impacted, not necessarily benefited, it depends, uh, because it's ruled by Jupiter and then it's um, fifth from where Jupiter is transiting now. And obviously Jupiter is transiting ninth from it, so a lot of ninth house themes for people with prominent Pisces uh, placements. And of course, Cancer always welcomes Jupiter uh, energy since Jupiter is exalted in uh, yeah. Cancer. So... Yeah, these are uh, some of the natives which might be happier about Jupiter transiting in Scorpio. But I think uh, a very widespread misconception is that now that Jupiter is out of an air sign, which was Libra, and which was not really that comfortable for Jupiter, now that it's in a water sign and that it, it's in Scorpio, everything surrounding Jupiter is going to be just awesome from now on, which... Awesome. We as astrologer, <laughs> astrologers know that that's obviously not the case. And of course, there's the example of the bounds. And um, the terms, of course, the bounds are very similar in concept uh, to the divisional charts, like how the sure. science divided that way. Uh, but there's a lot of talk about how Jupiter and Scorpio is going to be awesome. Lars, what would you say that who, who, would, who should pay attention, I think, um, in the sense that Jupiter transiting in Scorpio might not be such a great transit for them. Who should, who should expect a bit more challenge coming from Jupiter with this transit? But who specifically? Or? No, I mean, who, what, oh. which, <laughs> which general oh, thing? Okay. Well, uh, like, for example, I have one, <laughs> Moon right. in Virgo. If you have Moon in Virgo or Moon in Gemini, uh, Jupiter is going to be transiting your third or your eighth from that moon. It's going to be causing some sometimes unpleasant experiences when taken from your moon. So are there any examples like that that come to mind? Obviously, if not, uh, we can move on. To yeah, that. yeah. So I guess what I want to say about that is that, you know, Jupiter is one of the day planets while Mars is one of the night planets. So right. all throughout uh uh, Libra and now Scorpio, uh, Jupiter is in the sign of a sort of, um, he's, it's like he's in a foreign individual's house, like somebody he doesn't really know that well or necessarily even mesh with that well. He's in a feminine sign, which Jupiter is more nas ma more masculine because uh, he's diurnal mainly, you know. So Jupiter is kind of made a little bit sluggish in Scorpio in some respects. And um, but at the same time, I think very mystical. Jupiter is the, you know, right. the, the hermit or the, the spiritual seeker in many ways. And Scorpio are like, you know, the swamps of sorrow or something like that. You know, it's kind of almost like a dark night of the soul. And actually some ancient texts give some really, really negative things for Jupiter in, in Scorpio, you know, like unrighteousness, not following one's dharma, um, 
you know, jealousy and, and all kinds of things like this. And, and Scorpio itself has, Scorpio itself just continues to get a really bad rap. You know, it's like this, it, it, it's like this scorpion that hides in this hole and like comes out and just like stings you or pinches you or something like be, just because it's pissed off. So Scorpio kind of has a bad rap. So on the one hand, you've got, you know, Jupiter could be a, the, the adept who gets stuck in the, the last remaining sort of emotional wounds that he or she has to uh, let go of before uh, entering the light, which would be like Jupiter moving into Sag versus maybe, uh, you know, the more positive manifestation is like, this is a time to bring, you know, wisdom to really nitty gritty Scorpio fixed sign Mars stuff. You know, you're like right. you're bringing in the light, you're, you're, um, like if Scorpio is like a swamp, you know, it's like damp. And so you're bringing in the heat and light that's going to get rid of that dampness and restore equilibrium. So, and and obviously we spoke about how the Theosophical Society was founded with uh, Jupiter and Scorpio. And obviously that makes perfect sense because Jupiter always wants to, wants to expand knowledge to illuminate things. And Scorpio is, of course, associated, as you pointed, with the eighth house, and it's about occult inf- uh, information, knowledge, practices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we can expect some of that to manifest with this transit as well, as it, it always does to some extent. And so for someone who is living that theme, for someone who is living the um, Jupiter through Scorpio theme right now and is finding themselves at the beginning of this transit and throughout this transit more interested in occult stuff, uh, perhaps surprisingly so. Yeah. Uh, Jane, what are com- kind of the, um, what's the advice that you would give for such a person who is finding themselves really interested in occult stuff, really wanting to expand into the information that is kind of associated with uh, Scorpio, kind of a, an astrologer's guidelines to this. What are some of the things you would suggest? Well, I mean, first of all, I would say that it's not, um, when we think of occult, what does that mean? Um, the word occult means hidden from hidden. sight. So yeah. um, it's occluded. It means like you can't see it out of your vision. Um, so um, first of all, I guess like the idea of like uh, that hidden nature of Scorpio is to delve, um, delve beyond the um, superficial um, outer appearances of things. So um, if we wanted to say that it was connected to um, spirituality, um, then, you know, this is a great time for, um, for, for meditation and stuff too. So um, like to meditate or to contemplate, um, to spend time, you know, um, some sort of spiritual retreat. Um, but I don't think that um, it's necessarily tied to only spirituality. I think it's about, you know, really exploring those things that we don't normally want to talk about or think about. Those feelings that, you know, cause um, us to have a reaction, you know, that cause us to, you know, um, sting people, right? So right, right. Um, what, what's the motivation behind that unconscious um, impulse? Um, but for water signs, one, one last thing, sorry. Um, I would say that um, Jupiter um, isn't necessarily like more negative in a water, like in Scorpio itself. It just, I would say that it brings out more of the quality of Jupiter in Pisces in that um, it's the more um, abstract energy. Mystical? Than, uh, right. Mystical, mystical abstract yeah. energy rather than um, outwardly pronounced energy. So it's, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. Well, I mean, uh, Scorpio and Pisces are both profound signs, right? They're water signs and they're deep signs. Uh, They have a depth to them. Both of them are not about what's what's on the surface. It's what's in depth. But I like to uh, think of it this way, like Scorpio is the abyss and Pisces is the ocean. There's a bit of a difference. Like everything about Scorpio is depth, but not everything about Pisces is about depth. It's about width as well. Right, it's just boundless in that way. Right, exactly. So I think I think Jupiter is kind of feeling pretty well in Scorpio. It is Mars's sign. Uh, there are a few, you know, steps where Jupiter will feel like oh, this is I don't know about this, uh, but overall, I think it is feeling quite comfortable in Scorpio. It is a water sign. Jupiter is exalted in another water sign in Cancer. It owns another water sign, which is Pisces. So comparing to what Jupiter did in Libra. 
for the past year and then before that in Virgo which I think is totally horrible for yeah you know, like, yeah, it kind of is, unfortunately. Yeah, that, yeah. That's like the monk <laughs> learning tech or something, learning to program a website or that's something. That's exactly right. I was working for a web development company, and uh, Virgo right. is my midheaven, which is career, and that's where Jupiter And I mean, you're a Sagittarius oh, wow. ascendant, right? Right, exactly. Isn't that perfect? Exactly what you said, right? Yeah, so um, I think where I'm going with this is it really depends what are the houses, and the, whichever houses... Uh, Pisces and Cancer are in your particular chart will get benefited. If those are not so important houses or if you don't have moon or sun or ascendant there and if the effects of Jupiter from your uh, from these placements are likely to be a bit more on the negative side. And again, negative is sub, uh, subjective because right. for example, with That's Scorpio, right. uh, what you could get is Jupiter illuminates stuff and expands stuff and Scorpio is about the things which are, lie in depth and then emotions may come to the surface that, as you said, uh, we may not want them to come to the surface to be illuminated. We don't want to really see them, that they're there. But now with Jupiter and Scorpio, we have to acknowledge them. And of course, this will happen uh, more so in regards to the things represented by Scorpio in our charts and by Jupiter uh, as well. But you're right. This does not only tie to occult information. It ties into... Um, maybe hidden emotions that we ourselves are not aware of and that we find that we now have to cope with. And of course, Jupiter is also associated with healing. So this, uh, as long as we accept them and we uh, learn to work with them, this can be a great time for healing these things as well. Oh, uh, uh, right. Oh, sorry. Like, but yeah, you want to say things, something about that? Yeah. Well, yeah, you just said something that really made sense to me too, because, and I, um, I've been thinking about it. Um, it seems like this transit has a lot to do um, with death and um, the emotions surrounding grief and uh, losing people. Um, because from what I've seen talking to people in my life, um, that's just been a, a theme or something on their mind or things they've been dreaming about um, or thinking about a lot whenever, um, ever since the beginning of this ingress, right, into Scorpio. And so, um, and the eighth house is associated with death, obviously, and in a natural chart that's connected to Scorpio. But um, it does seem to be a, a very obvious theme in the people that I've been talking to um, in, the, in the past, you know, just week or so. So I think that's important to note. Wow. Well, and I just had this interesting thought too, and I think it kind of ties in very well to everything being said is like, Jupiter in Scorpio kind of reminds me of the Babylonian god Marduk, or maybe he's Sumerian. I can't remember. I, get, I always get them confused, but the Babylonian, or yeah, Marduk, uh, you know, fighting against uh, Tiamat, which is uh, the, she's symbolized as like this big serpent or dragon, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, I think she's either freshwater or saltwater as well. So there's this like water dragon that Marduk has to fight. And Marduk is in some ways, you know, really similar to like any of the king of the gods like Zeus or Odin or whatever. And, and, right. so, and Indra, he's very similar to Indra. Um, and so it's like that battle as well, the Indra versus uh, the, the dragon in the Vedas. And, and so it's, you know, it's not, it's just like, I don't know, it's just kind of epic. You know, it's like this, you have this powerful planet, this powerful figure, Jupiter, that wants to expand and wants to like expand our horizons and bring us in contact with the divine, entering into this, you know, this very like much more chaotic and primeval, uh, abysmal, um, right. violent, chaotic sort of part of of consciousness, which is symbolized by Scorpio, that eighth house energy of like really, really going through kind of like a, a shit storm and right. then reemerging in Sagittarius where, you know, the, the, now the, uh, the goal is more clear and the mind is focused through the arrow. So it, I don't know, it's just fun to, it's just fun to think about these things. You know, how does that work out in practical astrology? Um, so I think what, what <laughs> as a result of this, I think, and this is a perfect analogy, like the the spiritual figure battling the, uh, you know, the dragon, which yeah. lives in the depth of the ocean, in the depth of, of the abyss. Uh, because with Jupiter transiting uh, in Scorpio, whatever themes such as this will be highlighted in a person's life, whether hidden emotions, and, and by the way, it could be secrets, 
uh, oh, yeah. stuff like that, occult information, uh, spiritual stuff, uh, going in depth for uh, seeking something. These things will get illuminated. But once they're illuminated, they're there and you can see them. And very often they're going to look like a dragon at first. Yeah. And so it's really a question for the individual whether, uh, you know, the dragon will dominate the monk or the monk will dominate the dragon. And that's yeah. when when Jupiter steps into Sagittarius, which is his own sign, does he step there victorious or does he step there wounded? Right. That's very important. And this kind of Scorpio as like the final uh, dash before Jupiter goes into Sagittarius is really, really important because Jupiter and Sagittarius will be colossal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is really a you know, something that leads up to that and that many people should pay attention to uh, Jupiter and Scorpio instead of, there will be many people after they realize that, wait, Jupiter and Scorpio did not solve all of the problems in my life. Like, yeah, like, right. Yeah, it's going to be a struggle, I think, you know, and, and right. uh, actually there's they're going to realize this and then they're going to wait for the next thing. Oh, when Jupiter goes into Sagittarius, that's a sure win because Jupiter is going to be in its own sign. I say to you, if, uh, if you're watching this video and you're in this state where you got disappointed a bit about Jupiter and Scorpio, pay attention to Jupiter and Scorpio because that's going to decide how Jupiter in Sagittarius is going to be. Yeah, especially for the, the world. And, um, yeah, obviously. You know, uh, but yeah, I, uh, actually, I'd like to hear what you have to say, James, because I've, uh, I've already talked quite a bit just now. So Yeah, James, you were going <laughs> to say that? Well, no, yeah, I think I think that that's um, those are some really good points that you've both made, and um, and it, really what it evokes in my mind is um, you know images from like the Odyssey, and so it's like this idea of like the hero's journey, right? So you've got like um, you know which I mean they talk about Joseph Campbell in that context, but anyway, um, so Jupiter being the hero, like moving through the, and of course I see it that way because I'm a Sag rising, right? So. Um, but Jupiter's so twelfth house there, and you, right, right. So like Jupiter's moving through each sign, you know, it's some sort of like a quest, and so um, this is uh, the the part where Jupiter is facing the monster, right? I guess. So um, and uh, you know the giant scorpion, and or Medusa, or whatever it is that you want to, you know, uh, Hydra. Right, whatever it is yeah. that you want to like, you know, dream up that is some sort of like monster. For example, you want to you wanna pay but, attention to the fact that you may meet this dragon. Uh, of course, certain people are going to, um, you know, resonate right. with this uh, story more than others. Uh, but if you resonate with this, of course, the dragon is going to show up in different forms depending on what Scorpio does in your chart and what Jupiter does in your chart. Uh, and for example, for someone with a Sag ascendant, I would suppose if I was, uh, you know, uh, trying to forecast something for you, I would suppose that this dragon is going to come up very, you know, in your very personal sphere when you're alone, not in like society situations, like when you're alone contemplating at night, even in your sleep as well. This is where that dragon is going to manifest in some forms because it's your 12th house. And so, for example, if Scorpio was your fourth house, this dragon may actually have to do with some concrete issues, uh, not only emotionally as your personal security, like where you stand, kind of, but also like uh, property and... Right, exactly. Like termites or something, something hidden that you don't see. Right. So the, the dragon is not, it doesn't really have a form. It takes on the form of the place where it is in your chart. So if it has to manifest through your property, it will manifest there. If it has to manifest in your career, in your relationships, in whatever it does. Yeah, that's a really excellent point. And, and I think it's also, it's also interesting, you know, people watching this might want to contemplate, you know, okay, J- Jupiter rules uh, Sagittarius and Pisces. So from Pisces, it's in the ninth house from Pisces. So it's carrying the ninth house con- related stuff but it's can 12th house connotation for sad related stuff and in jotish um am i still there <laughs> you are there. Still you are now. Now. yeah okay good um in jotish sagittarius is uh, jupiter's mulatricona which means it's kind of the sign where it gets its fuel or its energy from so being in the 12th from that place you know it also can't it cannot see Sagittarius. So it cannot see 
the place where it's uh, getting its energy from. Instead, it sees Pisces. So in some ways, maybe Pisces is a little bit more important to look to, but I, th I think it's just something to contemplate. And, you know, you know, what does that really mean? Probably goes back to the, the battle of the dragon that I mentioned, uh, but it'd be interesting if we could cook up some kind of mythological type thing real or just imagine that deals with what is Jupiter in the ninth place from Pisces? What is that mythological kind of uh, story? You know, it's different than Jupiter in the 12th. I but I think, think it, right. uh, yeah. And I, but I also think it's important for us to emphasize that, you know, Jupiter is considered the greater benefic. So this is <laughs> the idea of like, where is it that this dragon needs to be slayed in your life, right? So Jupiter is like trying to help you to overcome something because Jupiter is about freedom, justice, expansion, and light. And so Jupiter is bringing light to a dark place in your life, shining a light on it. And even though some of the things might be painful, um, it's still like for your highest good. That's what I tend to like think about whenever I, I look at Jupiter's transits in, right. in my own life and then also in, in clients' life is that, um, you know, just because like something is um, hard doesn't mean that it's not good for you. You know, um, we get the medicine that we need, not the medicine that we want. So um, I think of it like this, the Saturn transiting the signs is kind of like um, a place that's becoming darker. So um, it's an area of your life that's being darkened, but Jupiter um, transiting um, a sign is where um, light is coming in, right? So those are, that's a place of light, whereas Saturn would be the place of darkness. Um, yeah, right. So anyway, I just wanted to add that in real quick. I think, I think this uh, analogy of slaying the dragon is very, very on point and it will be very useful for uh, many people. But one thing which, uh, you know, when you get the image of slaying a dragon, you think of the knight that comes with the sword and with the shield and I'm going to take you down, down dragon. And, but it's not like that with Jupiter. With Jupiter, it's kind of like the, the wise man with the cane that has some magical power to slay the dragon. Like, like Gandalf, right? He's not going to uh, exert yeah. physical... Oh, yeah, right. Physical you shall not pass. Right. You shall not so, pass. Gandalf versus right. the Balrog. So the, the, yeah. the dragon gets slayed through wisdom, through illumination, through truth, through right. faith. Exactly. Not yeah. through exerting yourself over it. That's, I think that's a very important point for people to... Uh, to know and also i guess like to um just make sure that you're not the dragon you know <laughs> you're, I mean, you're the always the dragon right that's right you're both you're the hero and you're the dragon and that's sort of even the if the dragon of. manifests in like your finances your career the dragon is still you the, yeah there's that's no other right dragon. yeah yeah. Wow. Well, really cool stuff. I, I wanted to just read this quick uh, Rumi quote that I feel like really illustrates some of the things we were talking about. It's just, no in thy soul of love, build thou a fire and burn all thoughts and words entire. So it oh, just, neat. yeah, it just really reminds me of like this. And Rumi was a very, very watery kind of guy. I don't know if his chart had much water, but to me, it's like, in some ways, he could be Jupiter in Scorpio in the ninth house or something like that. I was just thinking he could be like <laughs> from, from the quotes. I, of course, I only know him from the quotes that you find in some right. of them. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. Even be his. Like I saw a, a, a meme once with like Buddha and it, there was Buddha like there. I did not say that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I think someone like that, someone poetic like that, I would associate definitely with... Um, uh, Jupiter and Pisces. Uh, I, That's absolutely. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Pisces or even Venus. Um, you know, Venus is the idea of the uh, beauty of the beauty of language in uh, in some of these contexts. Oh, uh, I just thought of a better example. Uh, there's that great Nietzsche quote where he says, uh, "You know, and if you stare into the abyss, the abyss will stare back." Right. That's kind of very much like, a, yeah. like a oh. Pisces ascendant Jupiter in Scorpio in the ninth, uh, in some ways, you know, that's very, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> maybe more than Rumi. Yeah. Maybe Rumi was more, I mean, Rumi's more Venus than I think Jupiter. Well, and there's another quote that says, you know, in your pursuit of, um, you know, hunting, uh, monsters, um, be yeah. sure you don't also become one, right. In the I, I, I think they're back to back uh, actually. I think they're uh, like, Part of the same paragraph. I like, I'm not sure, like, who that quotes by. Nietzsche. Yeah. That's Nietzsche. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I like, I like Nietzsche. Um, or Nietzsche. Yeah. 
So um, actually, he has Jupiter and Pisces and Scorpio rising. Oh well, there. That makes sense, <laughs> yeah. right? but, um, but it is a very is he yeah, and he talks about these ideas that are very like Jupiter um, and, and in Scorpio, like yeah. it's a really great example. And he always and he he was his life was about probing into things that you know people didn't really want to talk about, didn't really want to examine. God is and dead. So, right, and yeah. and and really that quote um, comes from. a a larger context of him saying, you know, not really that God, um, you know, that this higher power is dead, but like the idea of God in the context of how it had been thought about for, you know, thousands of years had changed to such a great extent that it was dead. Yep. And so he was saying it's time to, you know, um, move on from this concept and into a new concept, I guess, um, which is very like Jupiter um in in a lot of ways because it's you know really asking you to re-examine um some area that you don't necessarily always consider so jupiter and scorpio right one thing to also think about i think is like thinking how it's not really about exerting that mars thing over the dragon at the same time mars will also be in scorpio uh in december and january yeah pretty soon so I think that's that's kind of a bit where you know where where the monk gets a bit aggressive on the dragon as well. I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, um, <laughs> I think that you know Mars and Saturn are really like the ideas of these dragons, right? So like Scorpio would be more like the cave, and so or, or down into the depths of the to, of the earth. That's where we're going, right? So yeah. or is Mars going into? Uh, you know, Scorpio, when the dragon appears. Actually, or is Mars is like, yeah, being rules. representing the dragon itself, you know, right. so where, well, like, I mean, it's just an analogy, obviously, all of this, but. But, and, right, yeah, but right. I mean, people will find ways to, like, link right. that to whatever is going on. Uh, and, and I and think right. this Mars ingression into Scorpio is, is quite something we should pay attention to because Mars does rule Scorpio, and so it will be in the same sign as Jupiter, and it will have a bit of, you know, a lot of sway over Jupiter. Like, what would you say something about that, Lars? Um, yeah, well, I, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking about how, like, you know, uh, we're not going to go into all this, but it's like Mercury is right there with Jupiter right now, for example, yeah, and then you know, Venus will be there, um, which will be combusting Jupiter. So it it'll be um you know it'll be this thing where where jupiter gets like burned so to speak and then rejuvenated and then right. so after all that and uh, then mars will come along and i i kind of i don't know metaphorically speaking this that could be the moment that the archer actually you know finds the courage to get the arrow of truth out of his quiver and like actually load it, you know, when the conjunction happens. Cause it's like, I right. had this image of like, well, Mars is not in the greatest condition right now. It's almost like a, you know, the archer of truth, like fumbling with his arrow. Like he can't, he's like unsteady. He's like, you know, he can't, he can't quite get it. But then yeah, when oh, Mars right. gets it and he like makes that killing shot, or it could be of course something a bit more, you know, tumultuous and, and, but, but either way it's, you know, where we're talking about, something really intense happening whether you're slaying the beast or whether you're losing the battle so to speak right with that analogy i think like how you said the archer is kind of like not getting a, a grasp of their bow and arrow i think that's um uh, uh, more true for uh, jupiter in virgo but uh, you know where they're kind do i put it here do i put it here does it have to oh yeah sure i mean know? more i mean more like but i mean the stress of a battle well, and how the sun's yeah but i think in. like the the archer cannot really see what they're that's aiming. what i was thinking right your eyes the are turned to, so, to the darkness yeah well, the, the he's kind of looking there what am i looking for then mars comes in and he kind of gets to feel the beast and then sun comes in and everything is illuminated like it's an open arena at that point so i think it, you're right. It's definitely very important to look at when Sun will enter Jupiter, uh, Scorpio as well, because well, then Jupiter will get even more opened, more illuminated. Yeah, that area is going to be really like you know pronounced. But also, like to what you both said, um, I think that another analogy uh, that we could discuss is like Plato and the cave. Like yeah. Plato is like you know um, allegory of the cave in, in this context that Jupiter is wisdom and Jupiter is awareness, right? So 
um, Jupiter and the sun together bring great, you know, light and awareness to a space. And so if you have that allegory of the cave where everyone's in the cave and all they can see are the shadows on the wall um, that are being cast by a light that's behind them, you know, this kind of goes in the sun is behind Jupiter, right? Moving, approaching. And Jupiter represents freedom. And so the person in the cave was set free and they go out into the light and they go back in to tell everyone about it. And then all the people there kill that person. That's Mars, right? So it's this idea. <laughs> um, it's actually a very perfect allegory for this, I think. Um, yeah, because the sun is like coming up on Jupiter. So uh -huh. they, st they right, still can't the see. Shadow, right. And then when it moves past Jupiter, then they can see the sun and there's some kind of illumination. Like, oh, it's the sun that's really the source. And these shadows are just shadows. Right, exactly. And then the guy goes back into the cave and tries to tell everyone about it. And then they all kill him because they don't want to believe that that's true. It, it destroys their paradigm. So people not liking the truth could be a really important theme here. Um, and people reacting like <laughs> they are, are angrily about information <laughs> that's uncovered. Right? It sounds like that's uh, this what's actually, going on I'm in the getting, white I'm, I'm getting chills, like, you know, thinking about it. Because, like, the idea of, <laughs> you know, information being uncovered that causes some sort of, like, you know, uh, passionate reaction from, the, you know, masses of people, maybe. The White so, House? Or, well, I mean, kind of reminds I mean, me of that. Well, right. I mean, like, and not to get into, you know, politics, but it could be any, any instance like that. It could be something that's bombastic, right? Yeah. So, um, I think that's very valid. And I think that's very possible because one of the things we know is that when a planet is uh, combusted, it's kind of agitated, it's angry, it's frustrated in some way, right? It's burning. Something is burning it. And it's obviously the sun and um and it's hidden too it's hidden and it's hidden behind the sun it yeah. depends if it's venus or mercury it's in front of the sun if it's uh you know the other planets they're behind of the sun yeah. but um the important thing is that planet is angry it's agitated it's frustrated so around the time when uh sun will also be in a scorpio we can expect on a world scale a lot of outrage about this is not fair this shouldn't have been done this is not right um either you know in in politics either in justice uh either in religion things represented by jupiter so i think uh yeah it's it's this transit of jupiter in scorpio is very eventful both with mars transiting there and with uh sun transiting there as well um real quick i have to share this i i wandered upon like a, <laughs> a scene from a black exploitation film i'd never heard of called uh the last dragon so yeah. funny oh my gosh and it's a kung fu movie and like uh i watched the final fight scene where this ridiculous guy who's like the bad guy he calls himself show enough he's like this dude with a big afro he's fighting this younger guy and like uh you know it's like he starts beating him and the young guy's like the protagonist and and he's like he's trying to drown him actually he's starting to drown him so once again you know the scorpio energy water it comes in and this was like yesterday and uh <laughs> so like while he's like dunking him in the water he like remembers what his master is saying about like you know um you know the master's in you like that's where the real master is and shonuf keeps going like who's the master like tell me who the master is and, and then the the kid like finally like looks at him he's like i am and it's like this illumination happens and like you know it's cheesy 70s animation so his body starts glowing really cheesily but then he like he like kicks his ass and he wins the fight but it's like it just <laughs> it reminded me of what we were just saying about the the sun coming in and it's like all that crap yeah, like jupiter would have <laughs> a halo around him like oh <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's just just too just too perfect um but there right. yeah there is that that when you guys were just talking though, getting back to it, um, about this like world stage kind of stuff, I was thinking, wow, this could be like a period too where people even more than they have been are like really viscerally, emotionally angry and feel like, feel like, an in, you know, whatever injustices occur, whether it's this Harvey Weinstein thing or something else, they're going to feel like 10 times as like, uh, you know, wanting some kind of justice you know like wanting some kind of like this isn't fair it kind of kind of almost reminds me of like when that 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 dentist killed that lion you know and, and oh yeah right. people were so fucking angry like, that's actually a good point um yeah. we should, maybe you could look up like you know some um you know examples like that later on and and show, yeah like where jupiter was when some of these things happen yeah that would um, be interesting but like um, want to go back to what Alex said about um, the idea of justice and what's fair, I think that's really what we've been seeing with Jupiter and Libra. 
And um, that was like a big topic, like the, the entire year, this idea of what's fair and um, contesting mm. things, right? Because even with the United States election, right? <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of idea of contesting it. Oh, and, yeah. um, and then at that same time, and this is actually a trend that I followed and I do believe it's relevant, um, is uh, the interaction between Mercury and Neptune and Donald Trump's chart and Donald Trump's life even during this time. Um, he has natal Mercury square Neptune and he was nominated when Mercury was opposing Neptune. And then all these different things keep happening whenever Mercury is making some sort of aspect to Neptune by transit. Oh, that's very interesting. But, but, what's, um, but going back to Jupiter though, like during this time though, um, with Jupiter opposing Uranus and Jupiter being in Libra and it's about what's fair and what's, you know, just and what's, you know, um, equi equanim um I don't know what word am I using? Um, what's equitable, whatever. So, equitable. Um, but yeah. the contrast of that with Uranus and Aries is like um, chaotic, psycho, madman, doesn't care what's fair. I'm going to like blow you up, right? I'm going to like just kill everybody, whatever it is. It's just really awful, like um, chaotic, aggressive energy. And Jupiter's like, well, can we just play nice? And it's like this guy sitting there with like, you know, big sword. And it's like, <laughs> well can't we just all get along and like the answer is no like this guy's gonna kill you stop trying to like be so agreeable like, yeah so we're moving from that energy to jupiter and scorpio where it's like okay so um come at me because i'm gonna like you know so jupiter is now like you know not so nice not so because jupiter has been battling out with you know uranus and aries and also the energy of aries itself opposing so um, now Jupiter is kind of like, okay, so um, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Um, we tried to do this the nice way. So now um, I'm going to show you like, you know, how powerful I am and how I can really like, you know, get to the heart of the matter. So um, I think those are some really um, important things um, that we can expect to see for, for sure. Yeah, I can't agree more. Actually, <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> Damn. I was just laughing because it's like so yeah. much of like Trump's rhetoric is like, that's not fair. You know, he's always going on about how right. that's not, and he has Jupiter and Libra stationary direct actually. And he, and this all makes sense, house, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah. In the third house of, you know, ideas about what should be versus what really is. And, and that it's just like, yeah, like that's not fair. That's not fair. And, and, and then fake news too. And with the Mercury Neptune square in his chart, he's always talking about fake news. So it's the idea of like <laughs> having trouble like yeah. figuring out what is reality. You know? <laughs> Those are another obvious thing in his life is like what's real and what's not is what I think always real, you know? Right. Very like Mercury Neptune and hard aspect. So both of those things. Yeah, it's wild really to to just kind of get get down it's actually to it. really interesting <laughs> right. yeah and yeah. i i had thought you know i don't you know jupiter and and saturn were kind of people said it was like a form of mutual reception and and technically it is when they were in libra and, and sag but right I, I don't think it's as powerful as when the the planets actually exchange the direct signs they rule because i thought that jupiter that this like jupiter saturn sextile was going to be like great for social justice and things like that and and boy was i just feel like i was really wrong i mean i'm not the most knowledgeable guy when it comes to world affairs but i just can't even think of i can't think of anything where i could say like wow look at that like social justice that happened during that mutual reception it's like but i don't know well it was at least a theme though wasn't it um, maybe not to, leave, not to leave alex out of this but it was an obvious theme um throughout the year where we had all these mass riots and women's march Things like oh, that. Oh, women's march, definitely. You know? um, but we had a lot of examples like that where people were, you know, calling for for um, justice and equality and fairness. So yes, um, that's true. You guys should know better, and of course, the the American political stage is much more diverse. Uh, not necessarily more diverse, but more, you know, there's much more happening over there. But I remember the one prediction that I made for the. Um, I wouldn't usually talk about a sextile. Uh, but this was just to exemplify the system of sub-houses or house from house. And I spoke of how uh, the mutual reception, I basically did not acknowledge that in any way. I just acknowledged that uh, Saturn was in Jupiter's uh, sign and, Sa and Jupiter was in um, uh, Saturn's exaltation, but I did not treat that as a, at all as a mutual reception. 
uh, there were some particularities to that. But what I thought was it was cool to exemplify the system of subhouses. Now, Jupiter was the faster planet. So you are better off looking at Saturn from Jupiter. So Saturn was aligning to Jupiter in the third from. So you take Jupiter, what is that? Religion, law, justice, and you put Saturn in its third. That means one of the things that it could be uh, on a world scale is that some things, justice-wise, religion-wise, ethics-wise, uh, the actions of these structures, these institutions, are going to be somewhat restricting because the actions are the third house and Saturn goes into their actions. So their actions become restricting. Now, I did not really follow that through to see what are, were the legislations passed in certain countries around the world to see, to really verify that. I just put that out there. Uh, but I just want to say that, you know, it is important to look, going back to Jupiter and Scorpio, it is important to look at the number of house, not only from your ascendant. So, for example, your ascendant is Cancer, great, it's in your fifth house. Look to the moon, look to the sun. Uh, look to your soul planet, the planet with the highest degree in your chart. Look to Venus. Look to every single planet and draw something from that. If it's in the fifth from uh, Mercury, which is your craftsmanship, your uh, management of things, um, your artistry, your skill, your communication, writing, then this is a great period for Mercury. Your craft is going to get improved. Uh, you're going to get inspiration. If it's in the fifth from Venus... Uh, you know, more creativity in your love life, stuff like that, yada, yada, yada. But I think it's important to really look at this and, you know, again, bringing back the dragon into the picture because the dragon was really cool. And, you know, yeah. we have to place that dragon not only in the house from the Ascendant, but place that dragon uh, in every house from every planet in your chart because uh, at least, you know, the, the visible personal planets. Uh because that dragon is going to touch while it's wiggling its tail around. It is going to touch these things. And I think it's important to tri triangulate this way. So kind of look at all of the planets and see, okay, this is not, this is happening in my seventh house is my relationship. But yeah. Jupiter in Scorpio is not only going to manifest in my relationship sphere. It's going to impact everything. So how is it going to impact everything? And this is where we uh, look at, you know, houses from houses, houses from planets and so on. Right. And, and actually what's interesting too is like, even if Jupiter, you know, even if we're, we're questioning, you know, how, how well it is placed in Scorpio, let's say, or, or let's say, you know, if it was in Capricorn or something, you know, we want to see like, you want to see how it's placed in your chart. Because if Jupiter is exalted in your chart and, and there's nothing bringing down that exaltation, then whatever Jupiter does uh, where it transits is going to be beneficial for some area of life uh, right. more than it could be uh, like less like more negative you know because the the chart can't be that powerfully overridden it can be um, somewhat overridden but not not in a way that makes it like a, a permanent overriding so like you know I mean whatever topic uh, people want to investigate if you want to know about your kids you know look at your fifth house or um, look at your Jupiter and things like that. Right. Um, let's see. We're kind of losing. Oh, am I back? Yeah. yeah. Um, You're back. Yeah. Am I back? Yeah. yeah. So I was just saying like, look at, you know, the, the, where Jupiter lands from your fifth house of children, where Jupiter lands from your natal Jupiter, which naturally has to do with children, you know, where it's yeah. transiting that is. And if, if it's yeah. in a good place from both those conditions and maybe, or positions, sorry, and maybe some other positions having to do with children won't go down that road because it'll be like 10 things. Right. But right. you know, you can start to get a feel for like, oh, okay, cool. Like it's in the 11th from my fifth and it's in the fifth from my Jupiter, which is actually what it is in my chart right now. I don't have kids, though. but if I had kids, I might say, oh, cool. Like there's going to be some definite gains and uh, maybe financial kinds of things for my kids or there some hope of theirs is so, realized, so, or, you know, right. Of course, assuming that the time Lords are also supporting that, you know, uh, right, right. we can keep on time on Lords, forever, so. but you know, that's the basic idea. It's a really wonderful way to, like figure out 
you know, cause in astrology and then I'll shut up, sorry. In astrology, there's this, I think we all have, we get into this weird habit of being like, Oh, what is, um, what does Jupiter mean? And what does this house mean? Or what does this planet in this house mean? But really uh, the way I like to approach a chart, especially when I'm reading for someone is to say like, okay, well maybe this person wants to know about relationship or their kids or their money or their job or their religion. And then I'm just going to look at everything around that topic rather than try and wonder like, well, what the, what does Jupiter mean? It's in their third house. Like, what could it possibly mean? Right. Right. What does it mean relative to like real life? You know, that's, that's how I like to do it. So, um, yeah. James, you were going to say, Oh no, no. no. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't even know. Like, um, so, uh, I guess like what I was, um, I don't know if I have anything to add to what he was saying. Um, I think that I think that it's important to um, consider that like soon uh, Saturn will be in Capricorn, and so um, and then Jupiter will um, be moving into you know Sagittarius um, in two thousand at the end of two thousand eighteen, and so um, you'll have both Jupiter and Saturn then in um, signs that they both rule. But during this time with Jupiter in Scorpio and Saturn in um, Capricorn they will make a sextile or Jupiter will sextile Saturn or um, vice versa. Right. So it's what by sign no, that, that by sign that, they'll be six. Huh? That already happened. I mean, it, it will once uh, by sign it, it, it is a sextile. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's not yeah. a, it's not by degree, but it will be. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm just talking about like uh, by sign, they will be, you know, in a sextile aspect from relationship with one another. So, um, you know, from the Hellenistic view, like you, you don't, you know, you can look at just a sign based aspect. And so it's the idea that, you know, um, so instead of them being an aversion to one another, because, um, the next sign over is a form of aversion because it can't really see it. So, um, so anyway, so now they'll be able to, um, be doing some type of, um, uh, work together. So, um, what will they be doing? And that's another, um, good idea to think about is with Jupiter and Scorpio and Saturn moving into Capricorn is what are these two planets going to be doing together? Because we, we tend to like think of them apart, but um, I think it's really important. And so um, we see, we've talked about Jupiter and Scorpio and what that might represent with like things being brought to light that are hidden, uh, secret information, anything like that. And then Capricorn, what is that? Oh, authority structures, government, all kinds of things like that. You know, who's in charge, who's the boss, and so um, we're going to see a lot yeah. of information coming up with, with powerful leaders, um, governments, um, people in positions of authority. So the truth is going to be coming out about a lot of people who are in positions of authority, um, you know, not just necessarily world leaders, but um, just in everyday life, I think. Yeah, your um, boss or something. You know? Yeah, right, exactly. And, it, and yeah. I think that, um, you know, it, you'll experience this more personally, I think, if Jupiter is powerful in your natal chart. Um, but just generally in mundane terms, I think that we'll see that as a theme for the next, you know, um, 13 months or so. Right. That's some great insight. And, uh, something that Lars said really, uh, sparked a memory in my mind, because, uh, you said that if, for example, you have a Jupiter exalted, uh, or in a good condition in your natal chart, it is going to bring a lot of good for something, uh, whatever it transits. So for example, I'm thinking about my own example Uh, I have Jupiter exalted in Cancer and then in the D9 it's in Sagittarius and it's exalted in the Sastyamsha as well. So like I have this, I have a good Jupiter, right? It's a bit weak by strength, but I have a good Jupiter. (laughs) That's pretty good. But when it it was transiting uh, Virgo, which is my moon sign, right? Again, most people, Jupiter going to your moon sign, yay, it's good. No. (laughs) This was my my moon is in Virgo in the fifth house. That's my creativity, right? And so that's when I really started to want to create through astrology. I put up my website, I all of that stuff. So that was great for me, and I'm really happy I did that. And that was what really led up to a lot of creativity in the years to come. Jupiter transiting my fifth house, but at the same time, uh, because it was my moon sign and because it was in Virgo uh man like psychologically emotionally i was a hot hot mess just horrible 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 but at the same time the exaltation of jupiter in my chart did show itself in my area of creativity so 
Uh, oh, that's a great point, Alex. Um, well, because yeah. you should look at the houses, like in these transits with aspects, you should always look at the houses that Jupiter rules in your chart. So oh, where is it going to be impacting you? And so, um, well, and I guess like, you know, for you, it's... Um, eighth and eleventh. Yeah, right, eighth and eleventh. Eighth house, eighth house, right. there we go, yeah. And, so, See, and then it's exalted right. in the third, so that's where my son is as well. We have to look at, yeah, we always have to look at, you know, the bigger picture because... Um, you know, I, to me, I don't think it was cause Jupiter was moving through Virgo and, uh, something I don't really work with is, uh, Ashtaka Varga. And so I can't remember, uh, uh, where Spooks Jupiter or, or no, I say it's, it's Indian to me. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just can't remember where Jupiter relative to the moon it, when it's transiting is good. Cause that's what that system does. James, it's like, it shows you like where, what signs a planet will be good in transit relative to another planet or planet i should say well and that's something that we could actually um you know talk about in private too about and, and discuss yeah. like and look at from a hellenistic perspective to what i what i shared with you with perfections um yeah. one day so anyway sure, yeah i just real quick though like robert zoller makes this really strong point that a planet, <laughs> you know planets always have an agenda based on their house position and the signs they rule and then even yeah. other planets they disposit so you know jupiter being in the third for you and ruling your eighth house right it's gonna get this double emphasis of an eighth house kind of theme because third is eighth from eighth eighth so like i've seen i've seen like i think like three charts of women where jupiter in the seventh having no directional strength um to Rara's rules or um, or malefic by its house rulership. Literally, up. Oh, am I back? Yeah, you're yeah, back. back. Could you go like oh. two sentences back? Yeah. So basically, I've seen at least three, possibly four charts, uh, but three I can think of where Jupiter was in the seventh. It was a woman's chart, and it was either a neutral house lord, meaning it just ruled angles, or it was a malefic house lord, meaning it ruled malefic houses, and it totally destroyed those people's marriages like and they did not have um, they either didn't have a marriage they were married to a, not a great person or they had a really nasty divorce or some combination of those things so like the house lord thing i i am like blown away by how accurate it can be even without the planet's right. nature being taken into account like jupiter when he rules for a libra ascendant when he rules the third and the sixth those are two malefic houses and he just ugh, yeah he becomes temporarily malefic for like this goes to the beautiful simplicity of astrology which i always like to like push on people like yeah. drop all the complicated stuff please it, it's totally useless when you get the beauty of the simple basics of astrology um what I do is like I provide forecasts like for free in Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And I use this technique. Like I look at any planet and uh, for, for example, cancer ascended, what does this Mars is going to go in this sign? What does Mars rule? What sign, uh, what house is this sign in your chart? And I make something up with this and it blows me away how many times I pinpoint exactly what's happening in the lives of many people like right, exactly when i say you may be dealing with lawsuits in regards to your property like this guy got a fine for his car that person is in a litigation over home with uh the spouse this guy needs to get a you know um some property passed to them through um eighth house what is that I inheritance inheritance, inheritance. Yeah. yeah so you know these basics of astrology going back to what does Jupiter rule in your chart? Where is it placed? And which is the house of Scorpio in your chart? If you get this right, if you spend like a month just contemplating on that, yeah. you will get a lot of that, I think. And it's very important to like, many times you, we stray away from the basics and the concrete. Yeah, because which... the thing about that is like, you know, Jupiter is like this nice planet by by his own nature. But you know, when he rules malefic houses, like that's an agenda that he's going to promote is like these difficult experiences. Right. It just, but so we can get, you know, we can get really accurate with just those mundane because the houses are very mundane. We can get very accurate there, but then, right. We can, we can say like, well, what would be the difference if Mars was ruling the eighth versus Jupiter, right? Like Jupiter ruling the eighth, probably not going to be like very violent, but it's still going to be difficult. Mars ruling the eighth, 
it's going to be probably more violent. <laughs> you know, right. Saturn ruling the eighth will be more uh, chronic, depressing form of that eighth house, you know, and so on and so forth. And yeah, yeah. as people look at Jupiter transiting Scorpio in their chart, you know, you, you look at what houses Jupiter rules from Scorpio, right? It rules the second house and the fourth house from mm-hmm. Scorpio, which will change in your chart and, and see, you know, what else the other planets rule from Scorpio. I mean, you can just, you can kind of drive yourself insane, of course, but I, I think what you're, the point you're making, it's, it's very important. And, and to do this from at least the, the moon and the ascendant. And if you know your lot of fortune, uh, that can be very revealing as well from the lot of fortune. So. Yeah, and we're actually we're actually running out of time, so we're at the end. yeah we're we're getting close to the end of this. Yeah. So, um, Alex, do you have any final thoughts about this um, about Jupiter and in, in Scorpio? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think one suggestion that I have for anyone watching is to again to keep it simple. Look at the house of Scorpio in your chart. Look at the houses that are rules. Latch on to that idea, and you will realize how it starts to uh, play out. Pay attention to when Mars enters Scorpio. Pay more attention when Sun enters there because many things will uh, be revealed. When um, Jupiter will retrograde, it's kind of going to be asleep. So that's a good time if there's a lot of pressure on you in some way with this transit. Uh, that's a good time to you know catch your breath and go at it again as soon as uh, Jupiter goes direct. And I yeah, think that's that- the. That's the archer ducking behind the tree to take a breath or something. Yeah. So I think I think overall we covered uh, much of what we could have covered in this yeah. uh, time very very properly and very uh, beautifully. So yeah, I think this was. Uh, I hope this will be a very useful video for anyone watching. Well, and also um, one last thing I'd like to add here is that um, you know the last time Jupiter um, was in Scorpio was in. Um, Let's see. So October of 2005. So the end of October 2005 um, was when Jupiter uh, last ingressed into Scorpio. And Mm. so um, according to the New American Ephemeris. (laughs) Um, But so um, so if you look back to that time period and think about what was going on in your life then, um, because your your natal chart was the same. And so, um, you know, you can. Get an, get an idea of what the theme might be that Jupiter um, is building on in your life. Um, right. For people who, um, you know, are around my age, like uh, 29, I was about to graduate high school. Um, and so that was representing for me like freedom um, in the home area because Jupiter rules my fourth house. And I was about to move out of my parents' home for the first time um, as an adult. So um, things like that are really good. Uh, ways that you can find insights about you know this transit um, and how it might relate to your life now you know then so just want to throw that last piece out there uh, and of course we will have the uh the free pdf which everyone should check out uh, in the description with more helpful maybe we will include something about the terms uh some stock of arga in there and of course more useful links i think this was a beautiful session it was a pleasure for me to uh, talk to you guys yeah, yeah it's been totally awesome. same yeah we're gonna right. do it again soon what yep. is uh next uh important topic i think will be saturn transiting to capricorn which is huge yeah, that is totally. huge especially for people having their their saturn return which right. is right yeah totally. right right i think all of us right i don't know yep yeah uh, Lars, yeah. is your okay so yeah. that's <laughs> yeah. people watching will will if they don't have if they're expecting like saturn return in aquarius or in pisces you can get to see how that manifests in real time yeah except for capricorn right yeah right so make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh thank you guys for taking this time to uh, discuss this topic today right and yeah i can't wait for the next video Yep, we'll we'll all see each other soon. Okay. All right. Ciao, guys. Take care.